Welcome everybody back to Moderate Mods and today we're going to be dealing with the 1975 Fiat X19 so yeah this is a mid-engined rear wheel drive sports car that was relatively cheap for the time and uh, yeah certainly was uh, no expensive Lamborghini or, any, or Ferrari from the period but neither was it the uh, same kind of performance as, as either of those but it's practical, uh, it's good looking, it's styled by Bertone and uh, yeah it's uh, easily one of my uh, favourite under 100 horsepower cars on this game. So uh, yeah, let's get to the uh, circuit and see what we can uh, do in its stock form first. Now I'm going to be using manual gearbox in this version of the car. Probably won't need to when we upgrade it, but yeah, because it's you know not got all that much horsepower, we're going to be uh, you know in manual first. So uh, yeah, D-class car. Not the lowest of D-Class, but as you can see, because the stats are reasonable, the top speed is uh, fairly decent for a car of this power. Acceleration is alright, the handling is decent, the braking isn't all that great, but the launch is good as well. And uh, yeah, that's because it has 61 horsepower, 67 pounds for of torque for its 1.3 litre naturally aspirated inline 4 engine. But it only weighs 2,210 pounds, so it's incredibly lightweight. So uh, yeah, let's get onto the circuit and see what it can do. So you can basically look at this as a uh, pre-Toyota MR2, but smaller and lighter. As a uh, yeah, obviously Toyota will come out with the MR2 in the uh, 80s, which you know is also rear-wheel drive and mid-engined. But obviously that has far more power than it's ever would. It's a bit of a shame that they didn't uh, continue making this and developing it and uh, making the most out of you know better technology and better engineering in general. To make it even better, but it was popular at the time purely because of how small it and uh, economical it was, while still being a mid-engine rear-wheel drive sports car, which is you know very appealing. And I can still see the appeal of a car like this today. To be honest, it would be nice to have quite a small, lightweight mid-engine rear-wheel drive car that isn't ludicrously expensive. But I doubt we're going to get anything like that given, you know, all sorts of regulations and all sorts of, you know, market marketing and the like, which is pretty much only favouring uh, crossovers and SUVs at the moment. So yeah, you're unlikely to see uh, sports cars ever be outside of their niche market, which to be honest have always been. But Definitely in the last 10 years or so that that become more apparent. There's one reason why the uh, BMW Z4 very nearly never happened, the uh, newest version. If it wasn't for the collaboration between BMW and Toyota, you probably would never have had it. So, yeah. Car companies are having to collaborate a lot more now on uh, doing certain things. Engines, drivetrains and the like. Which is understandable, but yeah, 1 minute 35.696 seconds is our first time, which is reasonable, but yeah, we can definitely improve on that a fair bit more. It does roll around a fair old bit, but because it's got so very little in the way of weight, it's, you know, not really going to be on its door handles. Yeah, the engine in this does not have enough power for this kind of circuit to be honest, it's way too uh, many gradients, in particular the uphill kind. And despite weighing so little, its brakes are not the best. Which I guess is a bit predictable given that you know it's only 61 horsepower and doesn't weigh all that much, but would have been nice to have better brakes. Really does not like this part. 1 minute 28.138 seconds is our second lap time, so that's a sizable improvement. 
yeah, we can definitely improve this in several substantial ways. Maybe we'll leave it in third. Fourth gear is quite a tall gear for this car, given the uh, lack of power and torque. Especially when we're dealing with hills. saying brakes aren't the best. That'll definitely be one area of improvement I think. There we go, 1 minute 25.502 seconds, which is, you know, fairly good, but yeah, definitely could be a, uh, a better time if we uh, had more power. I don't know why I turned around there, I do apologise. Kind of got distracted by uh, the time there, but yeah, 1 minute 25.502 seconds is not the slowest that we've had, I don't think, but yeah, there's definitely room for improvement there, and uh, yeah chief among which the brakes and the power. But nonetheless, let's get to the garage and see what upgrades we can give it. So this is the car in all its tiny, tiny glory and uh, yeah, it's uh, reasonably well packaged. As you can see, it's got a uh, front or a front trunk and a rear trunk as well. So plenty of space for, uh, you know, luggage. Only two-seater though, which is fine. Uh, I really have no problem with two-seater sports cars. In fact, I have more of a problem with sports cars that try and cram two tiny seats in the rear when they just don't work or are usable. So, uh, yeah, but a nicely packaged car, and I really do like the look of it. It's got that nice 70s wedge going on that we've seen with other cars from the 70s on this game, like the TR7. So, yeah, let's first look at the acceleration times in its stock form. So, yeah, 0 to 16, 12.7 seconds, which isn't half bad for such a underpowered car. But it does take more than a minute to get to 100 and only does 102. But the fact it does do 102 when it's only got 61 horsepower, again, is not bad. Other cars f that have that around about that kind of horsepower struggle to ever get to 100 mile an hour. So uh, the fact this can do 102 is fairly good. But yeah, we are going to obviously to give it some decent upgrades. I think we're going to give it a turbocharger to give it that extra bit of boost. As you see, it knocks it up 21 horsepower and another... 22 pounds feet of torque, which is fairly reasonable. Uh, I'm not going to do the drivetrain. I uh, don't think we can do anything visual wise, no. Tire wise, well, they're not the s widest of tires, but they're hardly skinny either. So I think 205s will do. We don't want them to be massively wide. And um, we won't need to improve the tread or anything. Gearbox, oh well, yeah, that's the problem with these gearboxes is you change them and then the. Uh, end up ruining the launch by a significant margin and even with the uh, race gearbox it's still no better so we're just going to have to leave the gearbox. We're going to do a race driving line to knock out some weight. We'll give it a uh, street clutch just to improve the uh, gear change times. Uh, definitely upgrade the brakes, the sport brakes because they really aren't all that good. Street suspension, street front anti-roll bars and front and rear. We'll knock out a little bit of weight just to make up for the fact that we can't, you know, uh, change the gearbox so it'll at least have some effect. And then we're definitely going to be upgrading the engine block. Give it a race block, knock it up to 1.6 litres. Still not a massive sized engine, but definitely a, a bigger, more, you know, torquey engine than it would be originally. Street intake, street carburetor, street ignition street valves and we'll give it a sporty turbo give it some cooling give it a sport intercooler and maybe an exhaust nah we'll do 125 is more than enough I feel 
especially given that we've uh, not had a lot of weight and we'll give it a street flywheel to make the engine rev a little easier. So yeah, there we go. Not massive amount of upgrades. Only 21,600 credits. Not the cheapest amount of upgrades that we've done on this series, but far from the uh, you know most expensive, I imagine. And uh, yeah, given what we've been able to do to it, we've given it more than twice the horsepower. We've widened the tyres, lowered the suspension, given it better anti-roll bars, better brakes. We've turbocharged it and the like. So uh, yeah, it can now do not 16 6.862 seconds. So practically doubled, the, uh, well, half the uh, not 60 time. Not 100 now in 21.097 seconds. So nearly, f well, more than three times quicker to 100, and it would now do 124 miles an hour. So uh, yeah, good 22 mile an hour quicker on the top end as well. So yeah, that is fairly reasonable to be honest. So uh, yeah, let's get back to the circuit and see what we can now do in terms of not just uh, the lap time, but also in terms of how it is to drive. So we're still in D-Class, but as you can see by the stats, we've massively improved. Handling and braking hasn't mass uh, majorly gone up. I think the handling is virtually the same, but the braking has definitely improved by a decent amount. Launch is better, acceleration is better, and inevitably top speed is better as we have now have 125 horsepower, so more than twice what we had originally. 137 pounds feet of torque, again more than twice what we had originally. From now an uh, engine with more than 300 cc's extra in terms of cubic capacity and engine size or whatever, and it now weighs 2,228 pounds. So uh, yeah, pretty sure that's about the same in terms of weight, because you know wider tyres and. Uh, the turbocharger uh, will add weight to the car but it's definitely got all, all the power that it needs now to uh, haul that weight around so uh, yeah let's get onto the circuit and see what it can do now uh, yeah obviously it's still only able to deal with four gears which isn't really the uh, preferred gearbox for a car like this I would prefer five or six but for whatever reason it really bogs down the uh, launch and uh, yeah didn't even have all that much benefit in terms of acceleration either Maybe it would have done if I'd have swapped it in after doing the engine upgrades, but I even still think after then that you'd have to do a lot of trial and error with the tuning to uh, properly get the most out of this car with a, uh, you know, a different gearbox with more gears. So, uh, yeah, but still, four gears is going to be more than enough, and it's certainly uh, still not a slap in terms of top speed. Likes to slide around a fair bit, which makes it fun. One thing that always makes me laugh about this car is that it never came with wing mirrors. Purely because to keep weight and cost down. Which doesn't make it the easiest of cars to drive when you're going on uh, first person view because you've only got your rear mirror to you know, see what's behind you or if you still keep it slightly less realistic in terms of being able to look behind you with a toggle then uh, yeah, that will help some regard, but yeah, the fact you don't get any wing mirrors is rather unusual for a uh, car that's from the 70s on this game. Most other cars from this period definitely do have wing mirrors. And if they don't have two, they definitely at least have one on the driver's side, so uh, yeah, it's always something that's uh, rather amused me about this car is the lack of wing mirrors, especially given it's a sports car and it's supposed to be a little bit, you know, of a driver's vehicle. Doesn't help not having enjoyed wing mirrors to be a driver's vehicle, to be honest. But yeah, 1 minute 24.568 seconds is our first lap time. Immediately quicker than our fastest uh, lap time in the stock vehicle, which was 1 minute 25.502 seconds. So uh, yeah, we've already had an improvement and we've not been able to have a flying lap. Which is good to see. Obviously, there is some turbo lag only having four gears to play with. This is not as bad as it would be if I'd given it a race turbo. At the end of the day, we're still getting up to far higher speeds than we were in the uh, stock car. We used to get up about to 80 on this bit. Up to 90 that time now, which is, which is good. Handling wise, it's fairly reasonable. It's not m majorly different to what it was originally, which is. Probably why it is still sliding around a fair old bit. But I think the major problem with this car is the uh, lack of balance. It only has 40% of its weight up front. So a massive 60% of the weight is going to the rear and obviously it's rear wheel drive and mid engine. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of weight and uh, power and physics being acted on that rear end. 
But 1 minute 16.77 seconds is our uh, second lap time. Again, big improvement over our uh, fastest time in this stop wise. I do feel a little bit humiliated that that ghost Volkswagen is beating us. Maybe a Beetle is the, one of the uh, future cars to do on this series. If you'd like to see that, then uh, tell me so. Someone has already recommended that I do a uh, Trans Am, which I'll definitely do at some point. Probably do that next week. I don't like to do cars from the same continent week after week. That's why we are doing an Italian car today. But there we go, 1 minute 14.892 seconds, which is a massive improvement over the uh, stock car, which, like I said, managed 1 minute 25.502. So we're more than 10 seconds quicker. More than 10 and a half seconds quicker, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, majorly impressive, to be honest. Uh, does still have some flaws. Obviously, it's quite oversteery, but again, like I said, that's in part because of the... Uh, rear bias on this vehicle uh, and obviously it's got some turbo lag because of the lack of gears but I'm still really impressed that it's able to handle more than twice the power it had, more than twice the torque it had while relatively weighing the same so uh, yeah majorly impressed with this and uh, yeah it's one of my favourite uh, cars to be added to this game via the festival playlist uh, we've not we've had it, it in I think the previous Forza Motorsport game but it wasn't in this game standard when uh, this game launched so uh, yeah pleased to see that it's finally made its debut on this game so uh, yeah get out there and get it if it haven't already I'm pretty sure it's still in the wind in the festival playlist I'll just, oh it's not available on this I'm pretty sure it's in the festival playlist at the moment but obviously that only lasts till Thursday so uh, get out there and get this car if you haven't already but nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye